I'm here with Rich Wolski, CTO and founder of Eucalyptus Systems. Rich, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Can you tell us a little bit about how Eucalyptus came to be? I know it was born out of the, the University of Santa Barbara. Go Gauchos. Yeah. Um, so you just tell me a little bit about that. Sure thing. Uh, so at UCSB, in the computer science department, I have been doing distributed systems research, uh, primarily funded by the National Science Foundation since 2001. And my research group and I were engaged in a, a research project called VGRADS, which is an NSF project, uh, and it, which is a long-term project, but which was coming to the end of its lifetime in uh, late 2007. And as part of the final uh, uh, segment of research that we were going to do together, we decided that we were going to try and combine the NSF Supercomputer Center research, uh, resources with Amazon's AWS, kind of showing how old-style large-scale computing, uh, which the supercomputer centers pioneered, and new-style large-scale computing in the form of Amazon could be combined in the service of science, right? That was the, the mandate. And uh, as part of that interaction, though, we really wanted to include university data centers in the experiment. So there would be Amazon, there would be the NSF supercomputer centers, and then there would be four to six university centers that together would run this large science application. And because the science application was old and because the science has been validated in the application, we really couldn't modify it. So rather than trying to port the application without modifying it to these university data centers, we developed a, a layer, a software layer, that could run in a university data center and pretend to be Amazon's AWS. And then we could port the code once to AWS. It had already been ported to the supercomputer centers. And then run it unmodified in these university data centers. And that software layer, that, that shim that was fooling this science code into thinking it was Amazon, became eucalyptus. So we, we had done that. And, and as like all of our research, we thought, wow, you know, we need to share this with the community. And we put it out as open source. And Overnight, uh, literally within days of our first release, we got tremendous feedback, not only from the science community, but from the commercial community over the, the potential impact this could have on, on this emerging discipline. Uh, and, and so uh, we, were, we were heartened by that uh, and, and eager to, uh, to pursue it with the community. And, uh, and at one point, it just, it just outgrew our ability to manage as a research project and, and became something that we had to, to take out into the larger world. And so how did, you, how did you do that? How long have you been around as a, as a company now? We actually took the, uh, everybody out of the university in May of uh, 2009, so uh, May of last year. Uh, uh, we really made the decision to commercialize in January. Uh, uh, we had such strong feedback from the commercial sector and, uh, and really took a look at various options for maintaining the project uh, at the university, and, and, and none of them were, were uh, ones that we thought we could sustain uh, uh, from the university environment. So we decided in January we would, we would look to, um, to commercialize the effort, and it took us about five months to, to work out uh, how to do that. So we started, we opened for business really in May of uh, 2009, and, uh, and we've been going ever since. And you just announced uh, very recently that Martin Mikos has just accepted the position of CEO. Can you tell me how you, how you wooed him and, uh, and how that's going to play out? Wooed him, wow, yeah. Well, I, I'd like to think we wooed him. Um, uh, I met Martin very early on when I was uh, struggling, literally struggling, with uh, how to carry the project forward before we had made the decision to commercialize. Martin very generously gave me some of his time and, and gave me some, you know, uh, uh, clear and, uh, and unfettered advice on, uh, on what the prospects were for commercializing technology. This was, this was October of 2008. So we stayed in touch uh, and, uh, and met at several functions. Uh, and uh, long about uh, January of this year, January 2010, we saw a big upswing in interest in eucalyptus, both from the open source side, which has been continually growing, but also suddenly from the commercial side. We'd had a lot of contact with commercial companies, but the commercial interest in eucalyptus just skyrocketed in the first three weeks of this year. And, and so we were discussing that with a lot of our colleagues, a lot of our friends, and, and through that, those discussions, we came to find that, that Martin might be interested in pursuing something in cloud computing space. And with his background in open source, it was a natural conversation to have. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled and, and a little awed that, uh, that he would express so much interest in us, um, uh, given all of the other opportunities that, that he's had. But uh, the fit looks good. 
Um, uh, we had many, many uh, deep conversations about where we'd want to take the company and about his philosophy on open source and about cloud computing as we saw it. And uh, in those conversations, I think it was clear, at least to us, that it would be you know, a great opportunity to work with him. And, and I hope he feels the same way. Excellent. Now, um, you are working very closely uh, with Canonical. In fact, uh, you're going to be working with an offering for, with Canonical for Dell. Can you tell them about that relationship and what you're doing there? Yes, definitely. Uh, so Canonical came to us very early on, even while we were in the university, and expressed interest in bringing Eucalyptus to the Linux community as part of their distribution. Uh, and that's a, that's a big deal. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a lot of work for them uh, to, to incorporate a technology like Eucalyptus. It's a distributed system. It's multi-technology. And it's a lot of work for us. We have to be very cognizant of, of you know, what it means to serve the Linux distribution community through uh, a venue like uh, uh, Ubuntu. And so, but it was a good fit. We, we wanted to do it, and, and, and we established that uh, you know, very early on. January of 2009 is really when we got started. Uh, and what's happened over time is that you know, Canonical's uh, uh, business side, uh, they, they do the open source side, but they, but they also you know, uh, have a, a support business, um, uh, you know, was really uh, uh, fitting well with some of the commercialization things that we were working on. And so we just decided to you know, carry that relationship forward uh, and, and combine uh, the open source technologies that we have developed with some of the open source add-ons that Canonical has provided and some of our proprietary products. And, uh, and that has resulted uh, in, in the UEC, which uh, is, uh, depending on how you want to provision it, uh, an open source core, which is Eucalyptus, and some Canonical uh, additions, and then perhaps uh, some proprietary additions from Eucalyptus systems as well. Cool. And then last but not least, where do you see Eucalyptus going uh, in the next couple of years? And then maybe if you could toss in some of the, the customer names as well that you've that, that <laughs> Customer been... names, yeah. So um, uh, where do we see it going? Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we, we hope that the open source uptake will continue. Uh, we really feel like, you know, cloud computing is in its very early stages. And an open source, particularly the beginning of a technology, is just critical. Uh, people need to be able to experiment with it. People need to be able to see what it does, what it doesn't do. We need to be able to get feedback on possible enhancements, things that make it better. Um, uh, so, so we will we'll absolutely pursue that. Uh, the market for private clouds in the enterprise has, has sort of revealed itself recently. Uh, early on, we weren't even sure that there was going to be a market for proprietary products. There very clearly is now, at least as, as far as we're concerned. So we'll continue uh, uh, to pursue that um, uh, and, and, and enhance Eucalyptus both on the open source side and with, with proprietary offerings that are specifically targeting the enterprise. Uh, and, you know, as far as, as customers go, I think the, the biggest customer that, that you know, we can uh, point to is NASA. NASA came along with um, uh, Eucalyptus very early on and has been offering a production uh, Eucalyptus cloud uh, to NASA uh, researchers, but also to other government agencies. Um, uh, and, and working with them has been fantastic. Uh, we've learned an awful lot about uh, what we need to do to make it uh, viable uh, in a government setting. Uh, and, and I think that that will uh, both benefit you know, the open source community involvement that we have and also uh, the business side of things. Excellent. Rich Wolski, thank you so much. Thank you so very much.